I love this model. This model uh, shows the brain. You can see the brain from different views. So here is the interior view, lateral, posterior view, and superior view. So in the anatomical position, here is the frontal lobe. At the front, we have frontal lobe. At the back, you can find the occipital lobe. So at the top, between the frontal and occipital, here is the uh, parietal lobe. And this is the parietal lobe. And down here we have the temporal lobe. So you can see two sulcus. This is the central sulcus. So central sulcus is, uh, is separating the frontal lobe from the parietal lobe. So here is the central sulcus. It's frontal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital lobe. And this is the lateral sulcus. Below the lateral, immediately below the lateral sulcus, you can find the temporal lobe. Here is the temporal lobe. Now I'm going to go to the deepest structures. If I'm taking out a, a, a one of the hemispheres, you can see the deepest structures. So if you look at here from the lateral view again, this is the uh, lateral sulcus. So deep to the lateral sulcus, here we have the insular lobe. So insular lobe is deep to the lateral sulcus. Yeah, this is the insular lobe. So if you look at from the superior view, you can find two insular lobes, two insular lobes. They are deep to the lateral sulcus, lateral sulcus, insular lobes. And here is the inferior part of the frontal lobe. I'm going to take it out and take this one out to show you here is the um, temporal lobe this is the temporal lobe these two right and left temporal lobes in the middle here we have the brain stem so this is the brain stem uh, at the center from the superior view when you are taking out the uh, hemispheres you can see the corpus callosum this is the corpus callosum. So corpus callosum connecting the right and left hemispheres. So I'm going to take the corpus callosum out. Just below the corpus callosum anteriorly, you can find this septum placidum. It's part of the septum placidum. So it's separating the right and left ventricles. So if you look at again from the superior view, this is the right and left lateral ventricles. And here we have the uh, corpus callosum. Just below the corpus callosum, you can find the septum placidum. If you look at this, this is the corpus callosum. Below the corpus callosum, we have septum placidum. Septum is wall. It acts like a wall separating the right and left lateral ventricles. And just immediately below the septum placidum, we have the fornix. Here is the fornix. So fornix acts like a corpus callosum. So corpus callosum connecting right and left hemisphere. Fornix connecting the right and left hippocampus. These are the hippocampus. You see hippocampus extends back and up as a fornix. So if I take the corpus callosum of septum placidum away, you can see how fornix connecting the hippocampus right and left hippocampus so it extends down and connecting the hippocampus also to the mammillary body so here we have the mammillary bodies these two breast shaped structure so you can see how fornix connecting right and left hemisphere and extends down and connecting the hippocampus to the mammillary bodies here. These two green structure is the mammillary body. So I'm going to take the occipital lobe and temporal lobe out. Go a little bit deep. So you can see the hippocampus. It sits on the 
temporal lobe. It is a temporal lobe. Deep to the temporal lobe, we have the hippocampus. It makes a flure for the lateral ventricle. Here is the lateral ventricle. So if I'm going to put it back like this, you can see how the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle sits on top of the hippocampus. So the hippocampus makes a flure for the lateral ventricle. And now you can see, as I mentioned earlier, these are the insular lobe, which is deep to the lateral fissure. If I take it out deep to the insular lobe, here is the lentiform, it's a lentiform part of the um, um, basal nuclei or basal ganglia. So here is the lentiform. And this part, this C-shaped structure, which is following the lateral ventricle, is caudate nucleus. So as you see here, lateral ventricle is a C-shaped structure. Caudate nucleus is also a C-shaped structure, which is following the lateral ventricle. And this is the mm, lentiform. So as you see, lentiform nucleus and caudate nucleus, they are connecting to each other and they make the basal ganglia. This beautiful model shows that, uh, shows the brain stem. Here is a brain stem and also it shows the insular lobes and a basal ganglia. So as you know, we have lateral sulcus, deep to the lateral sulcus, you can find the insular lobe. So then if I take the insular lobe out, you can see uh, part of the basal ganglion. It's called the lentiform. This is uh, the lentiform nucleus. And you can also see these lines. They are the internal capsule. So internal capsule is the continuation of the corona radiata. So it allows the uh, myelinated axons passing down through the um, the internal capsule. Now I'm going to take the insular lobe. This is the ins uh, sorry the uh, lentiform out. So the lateral side is red, so it's putamen. The medial side is a little bit uh, dark red, is globus pallidus. So lentiform is comprised of putamen and globus pallidus. So insular lobe laterally, medially. Lentiform, which is comprised of putamen, globus pallidus, and this one is the internal capsule. So I'm going to take it out. So medially, you can see this red line, C-shaped structure. It's, it's called the caudate nucleus. So this is the caudate nucleus. Um, so internal capsule separating the caudate nucleus from the lentiform. This is the lentiform. So lentiform and caudate, they come together and make basal ganglia or basal nuclei. And then, medially, we have this structure. It is the, um, the um, thalamus. So this is a thalamus. And here we have the uh, lateral ventricle. You can find the lateral ventricle. I'm going to take the lateral, lateral ventricle out, so you can see how the uh, lentiform, so the caudate nucleus C-shaped structure is following the C-shaped structure of the lateral ventricle. So medially we have uh, lateral ventricle, laterally we have the uh, caudate nucleus. You can see the relationship between these two. So if I take it out, you can see this whole structure here is the thalamus. So from the lateral view, and here is it from the medial view, and here is the third ventricle. You can see the third ventricle, the hypothalamus. Put them together. So insular capsule, sorry, insular lobe, deep to the insular lobe, Lentiform, dip to this, you can find the internal capsule, 
dip to the internal capsule, you can see the lentiform, sorry, the caudate C-shaped structure, which is relationship, has a relationship with the lateral ventricle. And deepest structure is the, the thalamus. This is the thalamus, this one. Now I'm going to put it into the place. So this is the a brain stem. At the top, you can see the, in, uh, the insular cortex and lateral ventricle, internal capsule. And I'm going to put it into the place because they are the deepest structures of the brain. I'm going to put it back here so you can see uh, the fornix, which is connecting the right and left hippocampus. You can also see how the, uh, the posterior horn of the lateral ventricle getting into the uh, occipital lobe. And here is the frontal lobe. I'm going to put it back. Yeah. Frontal lobe, occipital, and temporal. Now I'm going to put the corpus callosum back. So it's on top of the fornix. We have corpus callosum. And on either side of the corpus callosum, you can find, find the uh, lateral ventricle. And now I'm going to put the other side, the other part of the brain into the place. So just orient myself. Yeah, this is the frontal lobe. You can see how frontal, parietal, and occipital lobe covering the deepest structures I show you.